So we've now been able to measure a distance to the moon. Now that's one thing. How do we actually go about measuring a distance to the sun? You know, we kind of know at least today the sun is much further. Uh, how do you, how, how did they go about doing that? Well, the Greeks clearly knew the sun was further away than the moon because it was behind the moon, yep. but how much further away? And they, they thought they had a way to work it out. Now they knew how far away the moon was from the Earth. This is definitely not to scale. If it was to scale, it would be a lot <laughs> way off the top. Um, but the basic idea is if the sun was relatively close by, the sunlight is lighting up half the Earth yep. and half the moon. And what we see, if we sit there at sunset, mm -hmm. so the sun is right on the horizon, and the moon, we pick a time when the moon is bang overhead. Yep. Now, if it was a situation like this where the sun wasn't that far away, you see that the light from the sun is coming at a slightly different angle from the moon as the Earth. Yep. So looking from the Earth, you'd see more than half the moon being illuminated. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is that because you're sitting here at a certain time, your view of the moon would not be proportionate to what it should be had it been... Yeah. further away. So the idea is, because the sunlight's shining like up at an angle on the yep. moon, you're going to see more than half the moon illuminated. That's so right. you might see something a bit like this, only probably a bit less exaggerated. Okay. But if, on the other hand, the sun was very far away, then the rays are coming in parallel. Yeah. So now, when you're, once again, sitting here, looking at the sun on the horizon and the moon bang overhead, you'd see exactly lit up half and half. Yep. So essentially then because the angles are so far away, there's not much difference between the two. That's right. And the Greeks did this, and as far as they could tell, it was exactly half and half. So the sun was very far away compared to the Earth-Moon distance. Okay. And we know the Earth-Moon distance 450,000 bloody kilometers. So it's I already mean, pretty big. So the sun is clearly much further away. But again, I guess the question is how much further, right? A million? Ten million? A billion? Big number? Yeah. What big number? Yeah. So, how, we're now going to, we're clearly going to measure a parallax angle that's much smaller, and there's no way you can measure the moon precisely enough. So one idea was, um, we can't have this giant beam, the telescopes would be there, but maybe we can use background stars as a reference. So if we're looking at some sort of planet nearby, looking from opposite sides of the Earth, maybe stand back a sec so we can see the Earth yep. here, come back in. Um, then as you look from one side of the Earth or the other, you might see your planet apparently move to a different position against the stars. So the idea is if you're just looking at something so far away, but you have such a wide distance. So instead of blinking my finger, if my arm was a thousand kilometers long and I blinked it, maybe I'd be able to see a difference between something really far away. Yeah, so this relies on the stars being much further away than the, even than the sun, yep. which the Greeks kind of thought was true, and we now know is absolutely true. So basically you're, you're going um, to look at um, the background of stars here. I'll lean back for a sec and look at it from different points of view here yep. uh, and see that, that little difference with your telescopes. So we have a planet here, but on the other side of the Earth, the planet is much different compared to those background stars. Yes, that's the idea. Now, the trouble is you can't do this for the sun yep. because when the sun's up, you're not going to see any background stars. So but, you really only have a few options here, don't you? So you'd have to, you'd have to look at a planet rather than the sun. Yep. But by the time you're in the... Uh, 1600s, people knew that all these uh, planets go around the sun. So if you work out the distance from the Earth to either Venus or Mars, mm -hmm. you know they go in circles around the sun, and therefore you can work out the distance to the sun. So is it helpful just to do one, or were they actually doing it to Venus and Mars, let's say both planets? If they can get distance to any planet, okay. that's enough to work everything out by a scale. They knew, if they knew distance to one, they knew the ratios of all these distances from their orbits. And then all of a sudden you have a distance to the sun. So this was the great scientific quest. Find the distance to anything further away than the moon, whether it be the Mars or Venus. Um, and once you've got that, you can use your um, laws of motion to work out distance to everything else. Okay. The so, trouble, of course, is the angle is very, very small. Right, I mean, we were talking about with the angle to the moon, it's tiny. Now, if these things are much further, I, essentially the angle is almost zero. Yeah, so for the moon, we're talking about a, roughly a tenth of a degree. For the sun, it's much worse. It's about one four hundred fiftieth of a degree. <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine trying to draw that angle. Yeah, I, so how could you possibly measure it? So the idea is, again, you want to go back and measure the movement of something against the stars. Okay. And this is actually, uh, a way to do this was figured out by a, uh, actually at the time, teenage uh, British guy in the 16, early um, 17th century, who has built his own telescope. And what he discovered, the telescopes at the time had basically two 
by the lenses, yep. and the light crossed over between them, giving you an upside down image. And what he discovered was at one point he saw some lines superimposed on his image. And turned out they were threads of spiders, but probably not a redback spider in England. Um, but there were spiders web here. And it turns out that this sort of telescope has an internal focus where the beams cross over. And if you put, normally if you put something inside the telescope, it's so blurry you can't even see it. That's right, but because it was close to the focus, you can make out the line? If it's in the internal focus, you can actually get a sharp image of it superimposed on the sky. Ah. So what he built, well, here's his telescope, and that's the internal focus. And what he had were these either two pointy things or two bits of wire. Mm -hmm. And he'd crank a screw, which would move them backwards and forwards. And then once he saw the line, he knew it was in focus. So what he could do is he could look at, say, two stars, and he could line up one of the bits with one of the star and one of the other, and then measure off the screw uh -huh. how many times he'd turned it, and that would tell him the angle. Okay. I, I guess he probably calibrated it by point because the church spire 10 kilometers That's away, right. and then you know how big that is, and you can again work out, well, if these things are four turns of the screw apart, that's equal to the, the head of a chicken at the <laughs> five kilometer church spire or something like this. Okay. So the, these things were sort of ultra, ultra high technology at the time. I mean, you have to bear in mind that telescopes were only like 20 years old at this time. Yeah, that's right. I mean, and, and rudimentary still at best, right? And required it to be built by hand. You can't just go order it offline. Yes, yeah, so this was kind of the very early days of precision engineering, that you could actually build something with this level of precision to measure these angles as precisely. Once he invented it, everyone started getting into the act, yep. and he got uh, people like uh, Cassini and uh, people like Flamsteed, who were trying to use these things to measure the distance, in this case, to Mars, Mars being the closest thing you can find. Um, what Cassini did was he sent one of his assistants over to South America, and they both would use their telescopes to measure, the, um, and they'd wait till the Mars went past a particular group of three bright stars that they'd planned in advance and then measured the angles of these three bright stars very precisely, waiting until they went past the same three stars, solved the timing problem, and then using these micrometers or the telescopes could get the angle. Yep. Um, Flamsteed, invented, or discovered of the Royal Greenwich Observatory, he's the guy you can blame for the fact you use Greenwich Mean Time, I guess it's called Universal Time now to be a bit less chauvinistic, um, tried a different approach rather than go halfway around the world, he waited for the Earth to rotate so we could view from the, same t uh, from the same point at different times of the night as the Earth rotated. But wait, wouldn't Mars have slightly moved in that time? Yes, he had to calibrate that out. Okay. He had to allow for the motion. He actually picked a time in the orbit when it was apparently turning around, so it was uh, a very minimal motion. So. Which is something they have known about by that time for a while, the motions of the planets. Yes. And these... You read some articles online that say these people actually succeeded in measuring the distance to the sun. And actually what they quoted was about right, within about 10%. The trouble is it was an awful lot of cherry picking data. This is really on the hairy edge of what yeah. they could do with their experiments. Uh, so what happened was they had a whole bunch of different measurements and some gave crap answers and they thought, well, I'll throw that one out. That was crap. I'll throw this one out. That one looks like believable. So essentially they took and the ones that, yeah, that they seemed right and then... All these you're not writing. supposed to do in an undergraduate physics lab. That's right. Don't listen to that method. Uh, but they actually got it roughly right, but basically no one believed them. So. So, so it really took some more refinement to actually still work out the distance of the sun. So still a lot more difficult than just measuring the distance of the moon. Yes. So they, they kind of got the right answer, but it was right on the edge. No one believed it. So we'll talk about it in the next video how it was actually measured.